sad news. One of America's legendary diplomats, former Secretary of State Henry Kissinger, died at the age of 100. While Kissinger has passed away, his legacy, that will look, live on forever. Let's take a look back. With his towering intellect and ruthless realpolitik, his dazzling shuttle diplomacy and obsession with his own image, Henry Kissinger was perhaps the most gifted, admired, and reviled American diplomat of the 20th century. There is no country in the world where it is conceivable that a man of my origins could be standing here next to the president of the United States. A refugee from Hitler's Germany, Kissinger emigrated to the United States in 1938. After serving in army counterintelligence in World War II, he earned three Harvard degrees. Kissinger's seminal 1957 book on nuclear strategy earned him consultancies to the Kennedy and Johnson White Houses. Dr. Kissinger is a man who is known to all people who are interested in foreign policy. As President Nixon's first-term national security advisor, Kissinger negotiated to end the Vietnam War, while the commander-in-chief withdrew U.S. troops and secretly bombed Cambodia. Another 20,000 U.S. troops and countless Vietnamese perished in the four years before Kissinger famously declared, peace is at hand, and received the Nobel Peace Prize. When the Cambodia bombings leaked to the press, Kissinger colluded in White House wiretaps. Yes, to get into, to revitalize our alliances, get into a new relationship with the Soviets, to begin to feel our way towards the Chinese. For Nixon's historic trip to China in 1972, it was Kissinger's secret overseas flights that paved the way, and their pursuit of detente with the Soviet Union led to major arms control accords, astonishing breakthroughs that earned Kissinger broad acclaim, but enduring suspicion among conservatives, who later argued he and Nixon should have sought, like Ronald Reagan, to defeat the Soviet Union. In the uh, early 1970s, I don't remember any conservative even talking about defeating the Soviet Union before one could even control consider some of the aspects of Reagan's policy of Vietnam had to be finished. You can make as good a case for the fact that communism was ultimately defeated by the policies that Nixon started than by the policies that Reagan enunciated, and that Reagan could never have done what he did if Nixon had not first held the fort created this structure. Throughout his service to Nixon, Kissinger publicly heaped praise on the president in public. There's certain heroic quality about how he conducts his business. But ridiculing him in private and ultimately taking a more measured view of his partner in power. He lacked the capacity to reach out to people as individuals the way uh, almost all the candidates that I've known did so naturally. I shall testify with respect to all matters. Confirmed as Secretary of State in 1973, Kissinger's shuttle diplomacy helped end the Yom Kippur War. After Nixon resigned, Kissinger stayed on, a reassuring figure amid the upheaval of Watergate, and also, for a time, an improbable celebrity bachelor. Hollywood actresses drawn to the famous diplomat who called power the ultimate aphrodisiac. Yet lawsuits and controversy would dog Kissinger for decades after he left power in 1977. Liberals called him a war criminal, claiming he had coddled right-wing dictators and was culpable in the assassination of two Chilean officials, charges Kissinger denied. Unfazed, the elder statesman trotted the globe, a wealthy consultant, his counsel widely sought. He could be critical of U.S. policy. We have to stop lecturing the Russians uh, on our concept of reform. I think what is lacking is a clear definition of what the purpose of our China policy is. But Kissinger supported President Bush's muscular response to 9-11 and the Iraq war. We are going to sit there and let weapons of mass destruction pile up in a country that has already used them against its neighbors and its own people, against which we fought a war 10 years ago. <laughs> In 2014, he gathered with five other secretaries of state for the groundbreaking of the United States Diplomacy Center. And to the last, he remained active in foreign policy discourse, writing a book called World Order, reviewed favorably in the Washington Post by Hillary Clinton, who, like all of Kissinger's successors, drew on his counsel when she served as America's secretary of state. Agitators continued hounding Kissinger, as at this Senate Armed Services Committee hearing in early 2015, prompting Senator John McCain, a Vietnam veteran, to defend the one-time architect of U.S. policy there. Get out of here, you low-life scum. I'd like to apologize for allowing such uh, disgraceful behavior 
towards a man who served his country with the greatest distinction. Lifelong student of balance of power politics, acclaimed author of more than a dozen books and embattled subject of dozens more, Henry Kissinger engaged every major foreign policy crisis across six decades of service and commentary and strode the world stage with an authority and charisma matched by few other unelected figures in American history. In Washington, Rich Edson, Fox News.